I've made a license to play a church organ because to play yeah. the church organ you have to like get a license. I had a different name before on uh, MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, I I called the project Key Generator. Yeah. Because of all the key generators you come across when you crack software. At first it wasn't really like clear if that could ever be a thing if I if I could ever make a living off of it and she wanted me to do the teacher thing because yeah. that would be a uh, much higher uh, chance at getting a job. That was with 16 or 17. That's impressive. <laughs> and then like, uh, and then I showed this to my grandfather and I was like, yeah, I got a thousand euros for this. And suddenly he was just like, oh. <laughs> Oh my okay. god. I guess it was just A&Rs being like, yeah. the Skrillex hype was there and it was just like, oh, oh there's this young kid that does something remotely similar, <laughs> we should invite him, maybe he's cool. <laughs> and they were like, oh no, he's like really way too young and his stuff <laughs> is know, still shit, know. but I don't know if I've grown as a person. <laughs> this is sparking a lot of identity issues inside <laughs> me right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, so today I'm here with Virtual Riot. Hi, I'm Virtual Riot. This interview is actually super requested. Cool. Yeah, so your your fans really want to see okay, me interview cool. you. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool to hear. All right. Yeah. So you were born in Germany. I want to. Say, how do you say yes. the town? Is it starts with the M? Mar? How do you say it? Uh, Marl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the town I was born in, but I've never actually uh, like lived there or. Spent oh, any time really? There. Yeah. Did your parents live there as well, or? No, it was just the town I was born in. Like, oh. Literally, mother drove there to give birth in the hospital, then drove back to where we actually live. Where do you That's just why it's my birthplace. <laughs> like the, the official birthplace on That's the That's so on the funny. ID. No, the actual place I lived in was this tiny village called Lembeck, yeah. which is not far from Marl and had uh, like more cattle than people basically. That's Very crazy. tiny out wow. of the land. What was it like growing up uh, without that, that scene? Yeah, it was nice. It was quiet there. Yeah. Uh, lots of... Lots of fun. Uh, it was yeah, a lot. This is, it was a complete polar opposite to this. What do your parents do that made them live there? Oh uh, yeah, my mother. Uh, she ran her own pharmacy there that oh, she wow. took over from her dad. And my father is a teacher at a at a school. Oh, that's so cool. What does he like, teach? Uh, I think it was, was it biology and German. Wow. Uh, and then yeah, we just lived in our own house, like above the pharmacy that she ran. Yeah. So that was like. Yeah, where I lived uh, most of my life. Damn. Until I think I moved out when I was 13. How do you describe yourself back then, like growing up? Very annoying, loud, uh, very nerdy, playing a lot of computer games, not doing a lot of homework for school. You weren't into school? Um, nah. I, I mean, I, I, I went to school till I was... Uh, it's, school is a complicated topic because the g system in Germany is so, so much different than in America. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think I finished school when I was 17 or just turned 18 and then went to university uh, for... At first I wanted to become a teacher in music and English. Oh wow. But I wasn't... I didn't sign up early enough so I had to choose two different subjects that were still free so I signed up for <laughs> physics and religion because those were the only two free <laughs> Free subjects. I had to sign up for something. Never went to any of the religion courses because that's not what I wanted to do. Yeah. I went to physics for two weeks and then found out that it was way too complicated. And then I just stayed <laughs> home for a year and didn't do anything. Damn. Then just like sleep, eat, and make music <laughs> for a year before I actually yeah. started studying somewhere else. Uh, and then started yeah studied music production in yeah. in Mannheim. In high school, what subjects were you into? Um, math, actually. Really? So yeah, I liked really math. Numbers, yeah. No wonder, like, physics is kind of, you, you don't mind yeah, it. It's exactly. kind of interlinked, I yeah. I really like physics and math. I hated chemistry. I also mostly didn't really like the music lessons because they were always very boring. And yeah. the teacher got always very annoyed with me. Because <laughs> I would just always be like, yeah, like, I always wanted to do more. And, like... Were you, like, the class clown, or...? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure, sometimes. Yeah. Depended up depends on the subject. <laughs> so your mom pushed you to do piano, right? At that um, young age? I decided to, to do that myself actually because oh, wow. I have an older brother and an older sister. Yeah. Like way older than me. Uh, and they had piano lessons when I was six years old. So we had a teacher come over and we had a piano yeah. that they could practice on. So I would I would watch my brother and my sister getting piano lessons. And when I was six years old, I was just like, oh, I want to do that too. And then my mom was like, oh, okay, all right, you want it, you, you can have it. So she signed me up for it. And then I had piano lessons with that teacher for about 10 years. That's crazy. Till yeah. I was 16. And then on top of that did a 
uh, I made a license to play a church organ because to play yeah. the church organ you have to like get a license. What made you reason. what made you want to do that? Because that was one of the few ways to make like any pocket money on the side in our tiny village. It would either be distribute newspapers at 5 a.m. a.m. on a Sunday morning, which sucks. Yeah. And you get very little money for it or play the church organ for an hour at the Sunday morning mass and that was way easier But yeah. you, had, you had to do this three-year course of music theory and like you had to know everything about church organs That's crazy. How, they're, how they're built how they function There's like magnet, ma magnetic ones pneumatic ones mechanical ones. I can tell you everything about church organs That's so funny. Uh, <laughs> But that was that was actually really fun because the music theory lessons I had in that time to get this license were super helpful It was like everything about chords and scales and intervals yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and then I just played the church organ yeah. in our tiny village. And then when you're 11, your brother gave you, like, a program, right? Yeah. Um, he saw that I was really interested in... I had Dance for EJ back then. Yeah. Which was a terrible arranger software, but it was fun. And it was actually... Um, you know, do they have this here where if you buy cereal in a box, yeah. there's sometimes a little toy that comes with it? Yeah. So we had that and I always had Fruit Loops and one day Fruit Loops came with a CD of a music program with like a demo of it. It was like in the package and I tried it and it was Dance for EJ, the demo <laughs> of it. And I was like, oh, this is sick. It was just basically, you could, you could just arrange predefined samples in any way and press play and it would just like play back the samples on a couple of tracks. Yeah. It sounded terrible. It sounded like Euro dance, trance. Yeah. Terrible stuff, but it was so much fun and I was just spending hours and hours on this and I was I think 10 years old at the time and then my brother was already getting into music production a lot Yeah, and used to do that on like Cubase and stuff. So eventually he gave me Cakewalk uh, Which is a very old program and then eventually Cubase LE and the MIDI keyboard for Christmas Yeah, and then I would just use that and like try yeah. everything out on my mother's PC. I installed it and then does he still That's do music color. now? Yeah, he actually works in a recording studio in Germany in Münster and records local like rock and metal bands and produces their, their EPs and albums. Damn, that's crazy. How how's the production scene there? Were there a lot of like producers coming out or were you like the only one? I didn't know anyone. Damn. There was no one around me who yeah. did the same thing. I tried to get a few of my friends into it when I was in school. Yeah. But they never really like I could never really get them to catch on to it. The first people I ever met was through the internet, uh, like other producers, uh, talking with them, sending files back and forth, but no one in my vicinity was into it. Not, not until I went to this music production university in Mannheim, Germany. Yeah. What kind of music did your parents play in the house when you were growing up? Um, rock and metal. Wow. They were very much into progressive rock, like uh, from Yes, Gentle Giant, Spock's Beard, Super Tramp, King Crimson, through Dream Theater, Pain of Salvation, like a little harder. Um, so all that kind of stuff. And then eventually my brother, when I got older, got me into the more screamo and hardcore yeah. scene with Enter Shikari and Anne Berlin, Under Oath, Alexis on Fire, Funeral for a Friend, Seosin. Yeah, so that's the stuff I grew up with. You didn't play in a band though? I played in a school band, obviously, when yeah. I was like when I was getting older, but it wasn't. It was just for fun. And then after high school, so then you went to that school, and you knew that. How far on to your, were you on your career? Hmm. Let me think. I don't know if I played shows by then. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I think uh, it was before I played my first proper shows. Yeah. That's when I started at the university. Yeah. I think the first proper show I ever had was in Cologne at the Boats House, which was really funny. It was supposed to be Dr. P, and he didn't yeah. show up. And then the, the, the um, owner of the club called me and was like, yeah, can you come over? Like, do you have your laptop on you? And I was like, okay, sure, yeah. And then it was a uh, figure, Eptic, and me. And I did a terrible job. It was the worst oh I God. ever played. <laughs> but it was really fun. And I met uh, Josh and Michael. So yeah. That was really cool too. But yeah, I. I didn't have, I didn't play any shows yet when I went to university. That's just when, just when it started. It was like maybe a year after Energy Drink came out. Mm -hmm. It's around that time. And is Virtual Riot your first name or did you have other monikers before? I had a different name before on uh, MySpace. 
I had uh, I I called the project key generator. Yeah. Because of all the key generators you come across when you crack software. Uh, is this still is it would... online still? Did you check? There is still some stuff online, yeah. I think, but it's very very old. I still have it all on my computer. Damn. How it you... was just yeah. the first like dabbling around. It's, just, it's absolutely yeah. terrible. How do you describe that music back then? It does sound a little bit like key generator music, if you've ever listened to actual key oh, generator no. music. It's like chip tune, but it was just terribly mixed. I just used like all the free plugins I could find uh, and didn't give a shit about mix downs. Literally just yeah. like dragged in every effect, everything <laughs> that was there, turned every knob. But the, that's also part of the process, how you learn how all those things work. Just yeah. by just by clicking every button and turning every knob and then seeing, oh, this does that, this does that, then remembering it and eventually you have an understanding for what's, what all this software does. Yeah. So dabbling around that much helped me a lot and I just yeah. put it online because I thought maybe someone likes it, but it, yeah, never got anywhere. What clicked to you to change your name and like really pull your energy into Virtual Riot? I don't know why I changed it and then made an account under that name. <laughs> That's a really hard question. I don't know what motivated me. I know I had I had a song under Key Generator that was called Virtual Riot. Yeah. And oh. I thought, oh, that sounds cool. I think at the time I was maybe 13 and I just thought it sounds cool. Yeah. So have you seen the Deadpool movie? No. Okay, never mind. There's like one, there's like one sidekick hero and her name is something like nuclear teenage war machine yeah. something like something absolutely ridiculous and that was just like that sounds really cool and i had the same like premise with virtual right i was just like yeah. it's english it sounds cool i'll just use this as a name uh my english wasn't as good back then and that now i'm just like yeah, yeah. Now that's now that's just what it's called i might eventually start another project under another name really? parallel to this but i don't want to talk about it yet yeah but i have i have some plans yeah what made you not want to do your your personal name uh, you mean like Valentin? Yeah. I don't know. Just it's never feel, occurred no. to you. I've, ne I've never seen anyone else do that at the time. Anyway, I mean, now I see like lots of techno DJs do that, like Martin yeah. Solveig or like... I think that's more of a tech house DJ thing mm. to do. Yeah. What did your parents think of the whole thing originally? Um, my mother always supported it a lot. Um, I think it was never really... Uh, at first it wasn't really like clear if that could ever be a thing if I, if I could ever make a living off of it and she wanted me to do the teacher thing because yeah. that would be a much higher uh, chance at getting a job yeah actually. but uh, as it started to catch on uh, she was very very supportive but she was very supportive all the time my grandfather was not as supportive oh really he was to, to, for, to his defense no he's great He's great. He was very old. He was just, uh, I would like come over and show him my new music and it was definitely not what he listened to. He would listen to classical <laughs> music, to Wagner oh and Brahms, yeah. which is great. And I was just like showing him my new music, which also still sounded terrible at the time. And and he would just be very worried about me, like, oh, I won't be able to make any money. And then I made a, a remix for, who was it? Uh, some some bigger German pop act that I got like a thousand euros for and then I was I went to my that's grandfather and was big. like how old were you um, that was with 16 or 17 that's impressive <laughs> and then like uh, and then I showed this to my grandfather and I was like yeah I got a thousand euros for this and suddenly he was just like oh, <laughs> oh <Okay>. my god <laughs> maybe you can live from this yeah oh, no, that's so you've always been really close to him, right? The fact that you're like showing him your music. And, yeah, like, he, he lives. Him like uh, telling you how he wants you to live your life, but I guess most grandparents are just kind of like no, yeah, as close. He lived like on the next street over. Oh my wow! So we would just always yeah go be over there. Yeah. And he used to own the pharmacy that my mother had, obviously. So oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We all lived in the same tiny village. Yeah, and did that also like give you more confidence that you could do it full-time or did you always know that you would be able to make it somewhere or another? I was just always, I did not know that I would be able to eventually live off of that. I was always just very scared what would happen if I wasn't. So that was def definitely giving me a lot of determination. Yeah. Just the fear of like, uh, I, I really want this to work out. And also I don't want to do anything else. Like literally anything yeah. else would be so repulsive. <laughs> repulsive. Doing any, doing any other job. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that just gave me even more determination to put as much effort into this yeah. as possible. What happened after that? I was, no, that was uh, one of many remixes I did at the time. Because yeah. I just started working with my German management. Oh. I don't, I don't actually know why, but for some reason, 
pretty soon after I started working with them and I started putting out some songs of YouTube on YouTube, we got a call from like Warner and Sony Duh. and Universal and we literally went into every major's office for like talks about a publishing deal, but it never got anywhere obviously because my music wasn't really that good back then. Yeah. Eventually we always got like a few remixes out of it, mm -hmm. but I don't know why, that was really weird. I guess it was just A&Rs being like, yeah. the Skrillex hype was there and it was just like, oh. oh, there's this young kid that does something remotely similar, we should invite him, maybe he's cool. And they were like, oh no, he's like really way too young and his stuff is still <laughs> shit, bye. <laughs> Oh my god, so you went all the way in, was it like in Berlin or what? Yeah, yeah, like Ber your, Universal did, yeah. in Berlin, Sony in Berlin, uh, I think Warner was in Hamburg. Yeah, that's actually pretty impressive though that your manager found you at such a young age. Yeah, it was a very interesting way as well though, I think he was the... His ex-girlfriend was the girlfriend of a friend of my brother in school, <laughs> like something like that. Like, oh my god. A million links. But eventually he heard my music at my brother's friend's birthday party who had a CD with my stuff because my brother gave it to him. Uh, and then he was just like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like, linking, link him up with me. Like, you should yeah. come over into our office. We, we should talk. And then I came over and we had a really good talk. And we just started working together, I think, for the first two years without any contracts or anything. It was just like, let's see where this takes us. Yeah. And it's been going really, really well. Yeah. Were you not ever scared, like, at such a young age that people would potentially scam you or something? Um, no. That's why I was really happy about this agency not wanting me to sign any yeah. contracts and also my mother my mother was taking care of that as well so making oh, sure that really? wouldn't happen so she you ran like a lot of your early business decisions through her and she gave a lot of insight on what to do so she would just have marco like my first manager come yeah. over and like we'd sit in the living room and he would talk to him making sure that he's a good guy oh yeah and then, yeah how do you think your personality has changed since those early days I don't or know. grown up. I don't know if I've grown as a person. <laughs> this is sparking a lot of identity issues inside <laughs> me right now. I'm sorry. Is this okay? Have I grown? Should I have grown? <laughs> should there, was, is there anything I should have changed over the time? <laughs> Actually, for your YouTube stuff, was that really common? Because you started putting it out like seven years ago. Yeah. Were a lot of producers already doing it on YouTube and being like consistent? Um. I haven't, I haven't seen it at the time. Yeah. Actually, I don't know what time did Monster Cat start putting their stuff on YouTube. But yeah, I, like initially when I made the account and when I made the SoundCloud account, I would just make a song and like upload it instantly without, yeah. without running it through any label, just put it out there. Sometimes as a free download. I think most of them were not as a free download. And then the first label that picked me up was Section Z mm -hmm. at the time when they were doing stuff with Savant. Oh, and okay. then they just put out an album of songs that I actually already put out like all the stuff we put on this album was already on my SoundCloud oh. but they didn't care anyway it was like 16 tracks or something yeah and it was great I was super happy uh, yeah that's just how that started just uploading it that's what I tell a lot of people when they're like oh how do I like start a new producer act name or something then yeah I just tell them, I, I just uploaded stuff just yeah N with n through no label just put it there with no free download either maybe so people want to have the actual file yeah. so there's still something you can like give a label if they want to re-release it or something I'll just yeah that's just all I did do you think your fan base from your YouTube was different to your SoundCloud fan base at the time? Uh, not at the time, but now I feel a little more difference in yeah. there. Especially when it's like I upload a song to YouTube that's already been out for two months and then there's still a lot of people in the comments that are like, oh, this is a new tune, oh sick. That, oh, like, haven't, not... that haven't heard it because they're not oh, following me on SoundCloud. Okay. So I try to still run both. Yeah. Um, but I definitely, I want to do a lot more with YouTube because I did these like little tutorial videos. Yeah, I was going to ask like what inspired you to those like tutorial stuff because that was like way early on, like yeah. six years ago, I think. Were there many people doing like music tutorials back then? No, I don't think yeah. so. I was just, I, I, I used to have an old YouTube channel before the Virtual Ride YouTube channel actually where oh. I just uploaded stupid videos or videos of me playing the piano. Um, I used to make funny videos with a friend when we were really young, just with like a terrible webcam just for shits. So I was just like, I just wanted to make a funny video, but based on music production. So. Yeah, so you just came up with that idea yourself, or were you inspired yeah. by something? No, the, 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 it, was, it was just something I yeah. came up with. 
in, initially it wasn't even a tutorial. It was just the camera pointed at me yeah. sitting at the computer making weird sounds. You couldn't even see what was going on on the screen. Yeah. Like I didn't even think about that at the point. And then eventually people wanted to know what was going on on the screen. So I was like, okay, here's a screen capture. This is what I'm yeah. actually doing. And then it turned into like tutorials. I clicked onto your one from like six, seven years ago and it, the comments were like, this guy's going to be huge. <laughs> and then like, look. <laughs> so, yeah, nice. That's cool. That's great to hear. Yeah. That makes me really happy. <laughs> And then after that, what would you say would be like your pivoting moment where you're able to like stop living with your parents, like find your own place, yeah. like actually like just gain momentum in your music? Um, I think I moved, so I moved out from my parents and into my first place next to the university where mm -hmm. I started studying music production before it was gaining momentum. I think I was already making some money of releases because I put out on Monster Cat at that point maybe like there were yeah. a few releases there so I was able to live both of that and of I think my mother was just like getting child support so she was passing on to me since I wasn't living with her anymore mm -hmm. that was enough for me to uh, to survive while I was in university oh wow and then eventually with shows uh, yeah it would, it would get a lot better and I would eventually get to the point where I could move here yeah was that something that you always wanted to do? Uh, definitely after I was here for the first time. Damn. Um, I guess it was just inevitable, inevitable because the scene in Europe for this kind of bass music isn't that lucrative. Mm. Yeah. And especially with this kind of heavy bass music, uh, not a lot of the money comes from selling the songs because the only people actually buying them are other DJs to play them out. So yeah. it's more about playing a lot of shows. And this is that's definitely uh, a good place to be. Then, <laughs> yeah, we had our we had our management move out here. Um, oh wow! Like the disciple people, I think that was three three and a half years ago. Yeah. And then they invited me to come over here. That was before I was twenty one, and I didn't have a work visa yet, so I couldn't play any shows. I was just here for two weeks, meeting everyone, sleeping on their couch. Uh, but that was really cool, and I met, met like a lot of people: uh, Dirty Phonics and Jake, Kill the Noise, and Steve Duda. Uh, Eventually ran into Sunny for the first time. Yeah. And that was amazing. And I was just like, oh shit, all these people are here. I should probably move here. And yeah. Then with the booking agency, I finally got a visa and made this all work. Yeah. And that was for sure the right decision. Last question. Okay. What do you want to be remembered for? <laughs> Good music. I want to make all... I just... I still want to just create a lot of stuff. I want to create a lot of funny videos, do a yeah. lot of live streams, make a lot of music. Eventually, I also want to do my own visuals. I already started doing that. I just oh, want to, wow. I just want to create a lot of stuff that people like. Have you always been like an art person? Like, do you do graphics I, or...? I'm terrible at drawing. <laughs> absolutely terrible. Can't draw a straight, like a, a, a nice circle or even like a stick figure. It absolutely, looks absolutely horrible. Um, but I eventually got into animating in Cinema 4D. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Do you teach yourself that or...? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I, just, I just learned it by myself. And I started doing that about four years ago. And now I'm at the point where I started creating my own visuals for shows. Yeah. And also, you know, have you seen the artworks for the Still Kids EP? Like yeah, the I think open so. laptop surrounded by yeah. all these toy instruments. Uh, I made that in Cinema 4D. Oh wow! It was initially it looked a little worse because we we sent it to a professional to exchange some textures and change the lighting a little yeah. bit. Yeah. But like I I designed the models and or uh, put them together. Some of the models were from the internet uh, so for cool. all four artworks because yeah. I just really wanted to do something from start to finish all by myself. So even it like be exactly that's that's so cool. Like just getting into that whole aspect. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, I just want to. I just want to have like control over everything. Eventually, if I ever have the budget, design my own stage, with my own visuals, my own music. Eventually, perform that actually with a keyboard. Get like more on a haywire kind of mm -hmm. performance way with with having a keyboard there. But that's just a dream right now. But yeah. maybe who knows? Soon, hopefully. <laughs> Thank you so All much. Right. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Bye, guys.